Will John get involved in them or teach her three times? Namo Satya Bhumi Bhoda Namo Satya Bhumi Bhoda Namo Satya Bhumi Bhoda Today I talk to you about again about the uh, Lotus Sutra. You know, like I told you, it's a wonderful sutra. Near the end of uh, our teacher, he uh, gave us that uh, sutra. Okay? And the uh, chapter I want to talk to you today is about the chapter, 22 old ch chapter. It's a very good chapter. It's a chapter talking about the Never disparaging Bodhisattva. What is never? That means all the time. Disparaging, that means disrespect yourself. Okay? Sometimes, you know, <clears throat> for some reason, we don't trust ourselves. We underestimate ourselves. We thought, oh, we're not that worthy. We're not that good. That's not the way Buddha teaches us. He wants to tell you that you are very worthy. You are very good. You have to have that feeling that you are good, you are worthy, so you can elevate yourself. Like you go to school, you say, oh, I'm stupid. I'm a slow learner. There's no way you can learn. You have to tell yourself, no, I'm good. I'm intelligent. The reason I didn't know, because I'm young. The teacher is older than me. They are born before me, so they go to school before me, so they know. Now, they give back something to me, and I can absorb it, and I can understand that. And then later on, I can pass on the new generation. So, never disparaging yourself, that never understand yourself. You have to believe you have a good nature or awaken nature. You said, no, I don't have awaken nature. I don't have good nature. Like you deny, I don't have a genome. Like people, they have no education. You tell them you have a gene, the genome, they said, no, I don't have chromosome. They said, what chromosome? That's something you, you guide. Look at the science, science fiction, invented the chromosome. I never tell, never they told me that I'm born with chromosome. They didn't believe in genome. So, when you study Buddhism, you know that you have Buddha nature. You have awakened nature. That's one of the things, you, are, you have it. It's innate that uh, you have it, you inherit it. Nobody give to you, you have it. You're born, you have that genome. You have that, this chromosome. They pair chromosome with you. So if you deny, I don't have chromosome. You didn't have Buddha nature. I didn't have awakened nature. You're not Buddhist, I said, no. I'm not, I, I'm not Buddhist, I didn't have Buddha nature. You call it awakened nature. You call it intrinsic value, okay? You have that very worthy, the intrinsic value. That means you have a potential to elevate yourself. You have potential to study and to open your mind and we go back to our true home. Because the home we stay here is a temporary home. It's not really a home. The mind we have here, the artificial mind, your true mind, that your origin face, you have it. Okay? Sometimes that, okay, I go to school, I, I have a, my mind my intelligence. That's very temporary. It's temporary to place and to time. Your true mind, it lasts for forever. And it's very brilliant. So you have to believe it. You believe it. I have my true mind. I have my Buddha nature. I have my worthy nature. So you believe that. Okay. You can study. You can wake up. Okay. It's a matter of awakening. Okay. Like uh, for some reason we go asleep and we didn't know that we have that awakened nature. If you awaken nature, you, you can study, you can elevate yourself. So the Lotus Sutra is a wonderful sutra. 
28 chapter, every chapter Buddha wants to tell you something. And uh, 20 chapter, the Bodhisattva never disparaging the Buddha. He didn't say anything. He says, I respect you, I bow to you because you are the Buddha. I bow to you, I respect you. Some people say that, oh, you ridicule me. You ridicule us, you know. You, you make fun of us, he said, ah, we are the Buddha. He said, no, I do believe you are the Buddha. I have to respect you, I bow to you. Some people attack him. Some people insult him. Some people even attack him, he said, you make fun of us. So they attack him, they insult him. Which is very true. When you come that, so he's the Bodhisattva. He, he know it. He know you are the Buddha. And he is the Buddha. He have a self-respect and self-confidence. He wanted to know that you need to respect yourself and love yourself and believe you're worthy. So you can practice and open your mind. Go back to your true home, find your true nature. That, uh, the chapter 20, it's very, very good chapter. Read it and think about that. Think about that and you experience it and you see that you're very worthy and you can realize it. The realization is from you. Nobody can help us to the realization. You have to wake up. You see it, realize that I'm that worthy. I'm that, I have everything. Would I have it? I have it. Would I say, I'm the Buddha. You are the Buddha in the, in the future. But the Buddha is an awakened person, that's all. Eh? We don't believe in deity something. Many religions, they use a scare tactic. They said, you don't believe somebody, you go to hell. You believe somebody, you save. Like that person, that super being, that they call different name. God, they call different, uh, different name. Mahomet, Jesus Christ, they call it. They scare you. Because they said, you don't believe that, you go to hell. You believe that, you save. In Buddhism, no. You save yourself. You believe yourself. You find your true nature. You go back to find your original face. The face you have here, temporary face. Your father and mother give you face, that's a temporary face. But deep down, your original face. You go back to find your original face, your true nature. And you'll find it. So that's the, the chapter 20. So that when the Bodhisattva, he go around, he bow to you, and he praise you, said, Ma'am and sir, you are very worthy. I bow to you because you are Buddha. You believe it. He didn't make fun of you, okay? He tell you the truth, okay? People, they understand. They thought, oh, you ridicule me. You make fun of me. No, he was sincere, okay? That Bodhisattva, he is very sincere. He see your true nature. So he bow to you. He bow to you because he know that sooner or later he become a Buddha. If you look at the solar calendar, the lunar calendar, 100 years is very long. When you look at cosmic calendar, 100 years is nothing. It's a, like a nanosecond, okay? Like a history of the Earth, our world here, it's the first few days of the month of January of the cosmic calendar. So it can be one week, can be one month, we all become Buddha, okay? This is set up your, your goal, okay? Your destination. You have a GPS, you're a Buddhist person, you set up your destination. You will go there. It's a matter of time. Go to cosmic calendar, it's not that long, okay? Maybe one day, maybe two days, maybe one month, maybe one year. Sooner or later, all of us will become Buddha because that's our goal. Okay? So that I talked today about the chapter 20. If you go back home, look over that, you see why that Bodhisattva, he tells you never disparaging. Never, that means 
all the time. You all the time. Never underestimate yourself. Never disrespect yourself. You have to respect yourself. You have to love yourself. If you don't respect yourself, nobody respect you. Okay? You respect yourself and you show the people, I'm worthy. I'm a good person. You know, I'm virtuous. You have everything. This is a matter of time. You find your true, your true face. That's the essence of the chapter, the 20 chapter. Okay? So, go back home, open it, and read it, reread it, chant it, and study more. You'll find out the true meaning of the chapter 20. And I talked to you today about the chapter 20. You have any question? I'm trying to answer your question. Yes. Most in the chapters, there's a bunch of Buddhas with different names. How do they acquire their names? Like never disparage. Yeah. Um, the different name because you know we have like a, we have seven billion people in uh, this world right now. Okay? So every day have different name. So. They have a different Buddha. They have a lot. You have a billion, zillion of Buddha. They all like you and me. There was a human being. Due to the effort they practice and they progress, they become Buddha. They get awakened. So they have different name. Okay. So the name is not important. That's the reality. Because uh, not Buddha have the same name. You can call Buddha. That's the only the title. Awakened person. But each person has a name, okay? Like uh, 7 billion people now in the world now. We have seven, 7 billion, more than 7 different names, okay? Nobody has the same name. The white people have a name. The black people have a name. The oriental have a name. They all have a different name, okay? But the nature is a human being. So Buddha, like a, a person, they have different names. So the name doesn't really matter that much than the true nature of the Awakened person that the Buddha. Okay. Any other question? The Lotus Sutra is a wonderful sutra. Twenty-eight chapter, go back and back and study it. We are monk and nun, we chant all the time. Okay? Year in, year out, we re go back to the Lotus Sutra. You can go to different sutra you want in the matter of uh, uh, selection. If you want the uh, Amitabha Sutra, that's fine. You want to uh, different sutra, that's fine. But just believe me, go back to the Lotus Sutra, you find a lot of good things. And the more you think about that, the more it makes you happy, make you believe yourself, trust yourself more. Okay? You have to trust yourself. You have to have a self-esteem. If you don't trust yourself, then esteem yourself. Nobody can do it for you. Okay? Then listen to all the of the uh, opinion. That's the only individual opinion. Okay? Some people they like you, they talk good about you. Some people they don't like you, they talk bad about you. Don't be bothered by these uh, personal opinion. Okay? You know who you are. Okay? You true self. We know you. Even you find your brother, sister, some of them, for some reason, they get along with you, so they think highly of you. Some people, your brother or sister, they don't like you. It's a fraternity, the sibling competition. They don't like you. They don't talk good about you. Okay? So, but it doesn't matter. You have to trust yourself. Okay? Then pay attention to the other people. Because it's not true opinion, okay? 
it's a, it's a fake opinion. So just believe yourself. If you have no more questions, we go chanting. Namo Satya Mone Bhoda Namo Satya Mone Bhoda Namo Satya Mone Bhoda Can I put it to you? Come back soon. We are copies of that. The transfer to everyday wisdom and alignment. Since in the censer now is burning all the dharma, in every place auspicious clouds appearing, our sincere intention thus spoke. As all Buddhas now show their perfect body, home to the incense cloud canopy, Bodhisattva, and great Bodhisattva. Gratitude we offer this incense to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Throughout space and time, may it be fragrant as earth herself, reflecting our careful act. Our wholehearted mindfulness and the fruit of understanding slowly ripe. May we and all beings be companions of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. May we awaken from forgetful and realize our true home. To the eternally abiding Buddhas, the Supreme Dharma and sagely Sangha throughout the Dharma realm and the of empty space and three periods of time. To the Panda Shakyamuni Buddha, Maitreya, honored future Buddha, Manjushri, great wisdom, Bodhisattva, universal great conduct, Bodhisattva, all Dharma, guarding Deva, Bodhisattva, and the glorious 
mountain assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. To Amitabha Buddha in the land of ultimate Avalokiteshvara, great compassion, Bodhisattva, great strength, Bodhisattva, earth sword, great vow, Bodhisattva, and the assembly of great pure sea like Bodhisattva. Surpass profound and wonderful Dharma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of each. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it, and I vow to fathom the Tathagata's true being. Right. 
ten men for five hundred disciples at the time the world on earth. Once listen carefully the way followed by the sons of the Buddha because they are well learned in expedient means is wonderful beyond concept. They know how most beings delight in a little law and are fearful of great wisdom. Therefore the Bodhisattvas as voice hearers or by take a Buddha's employing expedient means to convert the different kinds of living beings. They proclaim themselves to be voice hearers and say they are far removed from the Buddha way and so bring emancipation to immeasurable multitudes allowing them all to achieve success limited aspiration lazy and indolent though the multitudes are bit by bit they are led to the attainment of Buddha inwardly in secret the sons act as bodhisattvas but outwardly show themselves as voice hearers they seem sending desires out of hatred for birth and death but in truth they are purifying the buddha lands before the multitude they seem possessed of the three poisons or man the signs of heretical views my disciples in this manner use expedient means to save living beings if I were to describe all the different ways the many manifestations they display in converting others, the living beings who heard me would be doubtful and perplexed in mind. For not in the past diligently practiced the way under a thousand million Buddhas proclaiming and guarding the law of those Buddhas in Wisdom, he went to where the Buddhas were, became a leader among their disciples, one of white knowledge and wisdom. He showed no fear in what he expounded and was able to do. The assembly never was he weary or disheartened in assisting the work of the Buddhas already. He had passed over into great transcendental powers and Unlimited kinds of knowledge, he knew whether the capacities of the multitude were keen or full, and constantly preached the pure law. He expounded such principles, teaching a multitude of thousands of millions, causing side in the great vehicle law and himself purifying the Buddha lands and in the future too. Countless Buddhas protecting, aiding, and proclaiming their correct law, and himself purifying the Buddha lands, constantly employing various expedient means, preaching the now fear saving multitudes beyond calculation, causing them to realize comprehensive wisdom. He will offer on to the dust come ones guarding and upholding the treasure storehouse of the law. Here he will become a Buddha, known by the name Law Bright. His land will be called good and pure and will be composed of the seven treasures. The Kalpa will be named Treasure Bright. The multitude of Bodhisattvas will be very numerous, numbering immeasurable millions. Having passed over into great transcendental powers and down with dignity, virtue, strength, filling the entire land, voice hearers who will be numberless with the three understandings and eight emancipate. Having attained the four unlimited kinds of knowledge, such as these will be the monks of the order, the living beings of that land will all be divorced from lewd desires. They will be in a pure manner by the 
process of transformation with all the features adorning their bodies with dharma, joy, and meditation. Delight to feed upon, they will have no part of other food. There will be no gender there and none of the evil pacific. The monk Buddha was one all these blessings to the fullest and will acquire a pure land such as is with this great multitude of worthies and sages of the countless matters pertaining to. I have now spoken only in brief at the time of Shanta Kundiyana and the other spoken said we have heard the sound of this prophecy assuring season tranquility we rejoice in gaining what we never had before and equal descent to the buddha of measureless wisdom now in the presence of the world honored one we be well our faults and errors of the buddha's immeasurable treasure we have gained only a small portion of nirvana and like ignorant and foolish person taken that to be sufficient we are like a poor and impoverished man who went to the house of a close friend the house was a very prosperous one and he was served many trays of delicacies the friend took a priceless jewel so hid in the lining gave it without a word and then went away and the man being asleep knew nothing of it after the man had seeking food and clothing to keep himself up, being it very difficult to provide for his livelihood, he may do with what little he could get and never hope for anything finer, unaware that in the lining of his robe he had a priceless jewel, a close friend who had given him the jewel happened to meet the poor man and after sharply rebuking him showed him the jewel so to satisfy the five desires we are like that man through the long night the world honored one constantly in his pity teaches and converses causing us to plant the seeds of an unsurpassed aspiration but because we are without wisdom we are unaware of this knowing having gained a small portion of nirvana we are satisfied and seek nothing more but now the book Wakens us saying, This is not really extinction. When you have gained the Buddha's unsurpassed wisdom, then that will be true extinction. Now we have heard from the Buddha these prophecies and descriptions of adornment, and how each in turn will be so a prophecy on his success. And in body and mind, we are filled with joy. Chapter 9 Prophecies conferred on learners and adepts at the time the world assembly and said i now say to the monks that ananda upholder of the law will give on to buddhas and after his name will be mountain sea wisdom unrestricted power king buddha his land will be clean and pure named ever standing victory banner he will teach and confer bodhisattvas and um, Ganji says this Buddha will possess great dignity and virtue. His renown will fill the ten directions. His lifespan will be immeasurable because he takes pity on living beings. His correct will endure for twice his lifespan. His counterfeit law twice that again as numerous as Ganji says will be the countless living beings who in the midst of the Buddha's law will find causes and conditions. At the time Ananda spoke and first saying the world honored one very rarely met with has caused me to recall the past the law of immeasurable Buddhas as though I had heard it today now I have no more doubts but dwell securely in the Buddha way as an expedient means I act as attendant guarding and upholding the law of the Buddhas at the time the world honored one spoke saying when I was crowned Rahula was my eldest son. Now that I have gained the Buddha way, he receives the Dharma and is my Dharma son. And ex 
existences to come, he will see immeasurable millions of who has held this sun to all of them with a single mind. He will seek the Buddha away, the convert actions of Rahula high alone, I'm capable of no. He manifests himself as my eldest son, showing himself to living beings with immeasurable millions, thousands and thousands of blessings beyond count. He dwells secure. The Buddha's law and thereby seeks the unsurpassed way. Those two thousand voice hearers who now stand in my presence, on all of them I bestow a prophecy that in a future existence they will become Buddhas, the Buddhas to whom they offer alms will perish as the dust particles of fifty worlds. They will guard and uphold the Dharma storehouses, and after that will gain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. same name and designate. At the same time, we'll sit in the place of practice and thereby we'll gain proof of unsurpassed wisdom. All will be named jewel sign in their lives and disciples. Their correct law and counterfeit law will all be identical and without difference. All will employ transcendental powers to save living beings in the ten direct. Read everywhere around and So this prophecy they dance for joy in spoken verse form, saying, World honor, one bright lamp of wisdom. We hear your voice bestowing this prophecy, and our hearts are filled with joy as though we were bathed in sweet new chapter 10. The teacher of the law at the time the world spoke to the assembly and said, If you wish to abide in the Buddha way and successfully gain the wisdom that comes of itself, you should be constantly diligent and offering on to those who embrace the Lotus Sutra. If you have a wish to quickly obtain wisdom regarding all species of things, you should embrace Sutra and at the same time give on to those who do so. If one is capable of embracing the Lotus Sutra of the Wonderful Law, know that such a person is an envoy of the Buddha who thinks with pity of living those who are capable of embracing the lotus suit of the wonderful law relinquish their claim to the pure land and out of pity for living beings are born here know that persons such as these freely choose where they will be born and choose to be this evil world so that may broadly expound the unsurpassed law you should offer heavenly flowers and incense robes decked with heavenly treasures a wonderful treasure hordes of heaven as alms of those who preach the law and the world following my extinction if there are those who can embrace this sutra you should press your palms together in reverence and offer alms to them as you would to the world honored one the best delicacies as that Along with various types of clothing, you should offer as alms to those Buddha sons in hopes that you may hear a moment of their preaching. If there are those in a later age who can accept and embrace the sutra, they are my envoys sent out among the people to perform the thus come one's work. Space of a kalpa, which should constantly harbor a mind destitute of good and with angry looks, should revile the Buddha. He will be committing an offense of immeasurable gravity. But if those who recite and embrace this Lotus Sutra, one should even for a moment direct evil words, his offenses will be far greater. If there is someone who seeks the Buddha way and during a certain kalpa, presses palms to gather in my presence and recite numberless verses. Because of these praises of the Buddha, he will gain immeasurable blessings. And if one lauds and extols those who uphold the sutra, his good fortune will be even greater for the space of 80 million kalpas with one. Wonderful shapes and sounds with that which is pleasing to smell, taste, and touch. Offer alms to the upholders of the sutra. If you have heard alms to and heard the teachings for even a moment, then you will experience joy and good fortune, saying, I have gained great benefit, medicine king. Now I 
say to you, I have preached various sutras, and among the sutras alone, this is the foremost chapter 11, the visions of the treasure tower at the time in the Buddha's presence, there was a tower adorned with the seven treasures, 500 yojanas in height and 250 yojanas in width and depth and depth in the air, various kinds of precious objects adorned
actions, living beings are wrapped in the aroma, unable to restrain their joy, and so a great wind were causing the branches of small trees through this expedient means. Certain that the law will long endure, so I say to the great assembly, after I have passed into extinction, you can guard and uphold, read and recite the sutra now in the presence. Buddha, let him come forward and speak his now this many treasures. Buddha, though he pass into extinction long ago because of his great hours, like the lions were many treasures. Thus come on I myself and these emanation Buddhas who have gathered here surely know this is our right. Buddha, who can guard the law, let him make a great vow to ensure that it will long endure. He who is capable of guarding the law of the sutra will thereby have offered alms to me and to many treasures. As many treasures, Buddha dwelling in his treasure tower journeys constantly. The ten directions for the sake of this sutra, who will also have offered on to the emanation Buddhas who have come here adorning and making brilliant all the various worlds. If one preaches the sutra, he will be able to see me and many treasures. Thus come on and these emanation Buddhas, all you good men, each of you must consider carefully this difficult manner. It is proper you should make a great vow. The other sutras number as many as Kanji sounds, but though you expound the sutras that is not worth regarding as difficult if you were to seize Mount Sumeru and fling it far off to the measureless Buddha lands that too would not be difficult if you use the toe of your foot to move the thousand million full world booting it far away to other lands that too would not be difficult if you stood in the summit of being heaven and for the sake of the assembly preach countless other sutras it would not be difficult, but if after the Buddha has entered extinction in the heat, you preach, that will be difficult indeed. If there were a person who took the empty sky in his hand and walked all around with it, that would not be difficult. But if after I have passed into extinction, one can ride out and embrace the sutra and cause others to ride it out, that would Difficult indeed if one took the great earth, placed it on his toenail, and ascended with it to the Brahma heaven. That would not be difficult, but if after the Buddha has passed into extinction, time of evil, one can even for a little while read the sutra. That will be difficult indeed if when the fires come at the end of the kapha, one can try and enter the fire without being into extinction if one can embrace the sutra and expound it to even one person that will be difficult indeed if one were to embrace the storehouse of 84,000 doctrines of 12 of the sutras and expound it to others causing listeners to acquire the six transcendental powers so one could do that that would not be difficult but after I have entered extinction if Listen to and accept the sutra and ask about its meaning. That would be difficult. Thousands, millions, immeasurable numbers of living beings equal to Ganji sense to become arhats endowed with the six transcendental powers. Oh, one might confer such benefits. That would not be difficult. But after I have entered extinction, if one can honor it, a sutra such as this one that would be difficult indeed for this the Buddha way in immeasurable numbers of lands from the beginning until now I have widely preached many sutras and among them the sutra is foremost if one can uphold this he will be upholding the Buddha's body all you good men after I have entered ex who can accept and uphold read and recite the sutra now in the presence of the Buddha let him this sutra is hard to uphold if one can uphold it even for a sort. Who can do this wins admiration of the Buddha? This is what is meant by valor. This is what is meant by diligence. This is what is called observing the precepts and practicing Gotha. This one 
quickly attain the hunt or pass food away. And if in future existences one can read and uphold the sutra, he will be a true son of the Buddha, dwelling in a land spotless and good. If there the Buddha has passed into extinction, one can understand the meaning of the sutra. He will be the eyes of the world for heavenly and human beings. If in that fearful age one can preach the sutra, for a moment he will deserve to receive on from all heavenly and human beings. Let's go to tab 9, page 171. Heart of the Pasha the Bodhisattva. This form, form is not other than emptiness. Emptiness is not other than form. The same is true with feelings, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. Listen, Shadi Putra. Dharmas are marked with emptiness. They are neither produced nor destroyed, neither defiled nor immaculate, neither increasing nor decreasing. Therefore, in em there is neither form nor feelings, no perceptions nor mental formations, nor consciousness, no eye or No touch, no object of mind, no realms of elements, no interdependent origins, and no extinction. No will being, no cause of ill being, no end of ill being, and no path, no understanding, no attainment, because there is no attainment. The bodhisattvas ground in Vajnaparamita find no obstacles for their minds, having no obstacles, they overcome fear, limiting themselves forever from illusion and Perfect nirvana, all Buddhas in the past, present, and future arrive at the Nodhara Samyak Sambodhi. Therefore, one should know that perfect understanding is the highest mantra, the unequal mantra, the destroyer, being the incorruptible truth, the mantra Prashna Paramita should therefore be proclaimed. Gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, gate, bodhisattva, gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, Gate gate para gate para sam gate bodhiswa. Chen beings are limitless. I vow to liberate them. Are endless. I vow to eradicate them. Teachings are infinite. I vow to learn them. Buddha. Supreme, I vow to attain. I vow that from now until the end of your lives, until I attain Anukara Samyak Sambodhi, that I will help all sentient beings and all realms of sins and their suffering. Namo, that thus come one worthy of offerings a proper and universal. Bodhisattva Namo Manjushri 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 Bodhisattva Namo
Citing the sutras, practicing the way of awareness is rise to benefits without limits. We vow to share the fruits with all beings. We vow to offer tribute. Friends and numerous beings who give guidance and support all. 